And this is an interesting um, comparison chart that we actually got from um, Practical Greenhouses and Hydroponics magazine. I think it's uh, issue number 117. And they're looking at, um, at the average production kilograms per plant per medium. And we can see where perlite is up there, it's 2.61. And we've got sawdust sitting down there at about 1.88. Okay, so these are 2.61, And uh, And so, you know, we're seeing roughly around a 30% reduction in, uh, in production from sawdust there. Uh, categorised total weight yield per medium in, in um, kilograms, once again 30%. And this is a South African trial that was run uh, around about three years ago, four years ago. It's probably one of the, uh, the few trials that's actually been done. And we need more of this information out because me, as the radical fundamentalist advisor running around up there that gets treated like a maniac, um, need stuff like this to say, listen, you're not making money. Because I have stand over arguments that almost turn into fisticuffs with uh, seeds reps that don't want me changing media up there. Even though the media is rubbish and the practices are terrible, I'm still seen as some sort of weird maverick. So, um, more of this, more independent, well supervised, replicated trials. That's what we really need. So, oh, by conclusion, the market at the moment up there is a very young market in, in um, cropping, uh, protected cropping. Um, the majority of the people that are going to be putting greenhouses in are going to be the sick community up there. They, they have, typically speaking, a very, very strong bulldust antenna, but that's very slow to activate. Once they get onto it, they know when you're actually telling them a lot of garbage, but there are a bunch of people coming in early in the, in the industry, selling them a lot of parts, okay? And they, they need to have somebody they can trust. They need to have people in there that can actually help them grow things rather than hinder them with the wrong information. Um, there, there are always parts of an industry that are going to be, I suppose, um, ephemeral, and they're usually the, the snake oil merchants and the, the, the bull crappers that run through our, our organisations, don't know what they're talking about and don't care about the industry. They're probably scared of their sales manager and, and they're not prepared to actually go in there and say, if I make you rich, will you keep dealing with me? You know? Um, and it's, it's a, a really um, potentially lucrative market up in that area. Um, it's an open market, but we do need education up there. I believe that TAFE is... Um, is walking away from that area a bit at the moment, and that could change. It could change in a, a couple of years. It could change in, in the space for an election. Um, but it's going to take a bit of time to get that market happening. Um, if I go into a new new area as, say, a fertiliser salesman or a compost tea salesman or whatever else, I know it's going to take 18 months to two years to start getting anything working reasonably well. And I have to come and find the likes of uh, Mr. Patrick Gill, who will have an open mind, who is respected by the community and uh, doesn't have a barrow to push to actually give some good independent information to the rest of the community that will actually support my sales claims. Um, and of course, as I said before, we need more trials, uh, we need more field days and we need a lot more education of growers. And one of the issues I find in my business is that it's becoming largely edu educative but they don't want to pay for the education. <laughs> um, so I, I tend to hang around up there and, and tell them this is what they've got to do and, and you know, they'll, they'll use me a couple of times and then they'll go off and grab somebody else and have a, a mistake and come back and get me. Um, so it's, it's sort of, um, you know, an interesting way to eke out an existence up there. But when the rest of the industry comes through and starts offering such a good product as, as Perlite is, and, and sells it the right way with education and, and with uh, decent trialling and, and, uh, and good champions such as Pardeps and Gill, um, then, then we're in a, a situation where we can actually get some advances going in the area and, and basically stabilise our business in, in income from that area and actually have it slowly grow. 
And of course the final thing is when we start looking at perlite, one of the big issues that we see with a lot of other substrates, including cucumbers, is, is disposal. Um, I went to Gaira to, um, to Costa Exchange Tomato Farm, which is about a, a 40 hectare tomato greenhouse, and it's under glass, it's not under poly FLA. Um, and these guys are using the very best in Dutch technology, and they're using rock wool. And they're the only people that can actually reuse rock wool because they've actually got a size about them that can actually break it down and, and chop it up and, and dispose of it safely. The beauty of perlite is that it can be disposed of safely. In fact, it is an environmental asset. If you've got too much in there, you basically give it a flush, get rid of the salts, and then you put it onto some ground and just watch the cation exchange increase and watch the air-filled porosity going mad in the soil. So when, I, when we talk about perlite, as opposed to sawdust, as opposed to coir, as opposed to anything else, we are actually talking about a winner. It costs more, but what it provides over a couple of seasons is just an inestimable increase in, in profit, profitability and in environmental um, suitability, really. And a lot of people are starting to look at the environment very closely, even people in Coffs Harbour, even before the EP comes through and finds them. <laughs> so anyway, any questions? You mentioned uh, quite earlier on the NBN. I wasn't aware that that was in Coffs Harbour. Perhaps you could explain what the NBN is and uh, mm. it could have some uh, potential for use as, as an, uh, an information yeah, distribution sure. point. Yeah, look, the NBN, um, for those that don't come from Australia, is um, the National Broadband Network. Uh, it's a high-speed fibre to the home, or it was fibre to the home before the last election, now it's <coughs> in a bit of debate as to whether it's going to be fibre to the node or fibre to the home. Um, it will provide, um, at fibre to the home levels, up to a, I think it's a, a terabyte download before too long. Um, it just depends on the hardware that gets put on the end of the fibre. The fibre itself is just basically indestructible. It's replacing a 100-year-old copper network that's certainly around my place going down by the day. Um, one of the big beauties of the NBN for farming up in our way, and one of the things I get onto my growers about is the use of, uh, of metering. And in particular, things like um, some of the electronic systems you've got for tensiometers that you can actually put into a weather system. And you can put them halfway down a pot. And you can say, right, um, you're running out of water, you've got to water now. And you can see that, you can use uh, telemetry within your greenhouse system um, and come to a, a conference in Australia and go, oh my God, what's my farm manager doing over in, in California? Quick, wake up, go and water, okay? Because it's, it's going to be that effective as far as getting information across to you. Vital growing information. Um, the NBN is going to actually make it easy for me to um, get diseases diagnosed. I've got contacts with really good plant pathologists and I, I sometimes find new diseases and new disorders. And um, I can basically run a video camera over the plant and they can say, well, this is something we've seen before. It's not better so it send us a sample straight away. Um, the uses for the NBN are going to be manifold, or, it's, or manifold, I should say. It's, it's got all of these metering capabilities, it's got uh, the communications, the rapid communications, the, the immediate eyes on from a long way away, making sure that you don't have to wait for a poorly paid Department of Primary Industries specialist to plead with his boss to let him drive up to have a look at your crop. You can just shoot it straight down to him and say, okay, what's going on here? And, and he'll have a really good idea because our camera technology is going to get better. And of course, the reception's quite quite good up there now in Coffs. For some reason, and I don't know exactly why they did it or why they didn't exploit it, the last government actually put Coffs Harbour number one on the, the actual map as far as getting this put in there. And now the NBN's right around Coffs Harbour and everybody's sitting there with their, their 100 megabytes download per second. And soon, as I say, it'll be quite possibly a terabyte download. By the time the rest of the country's in, it's meant to be that height and that size. Um, so, 
it's it's mind boggling. It gets us back to being on par with Korea and uh, and some of the smarter parts of America. Um, and, and you know we we just basically need that as a country. Coffs Harbour is trying to come to grips with how they're going to exploit it uh, business wise. And Coffs farmers, God bless them, will probably get onto it in about 25 years <laughs> at this present rate, unless we get in there and help them. Okay. And that's the big thing. They're not idiots, but they're just being confused by people that don't know what they're talking about. They see probably 100 reps a month, and that, that's a lot of tall stories. Okay, that's a hell of a lot of tall stories because those reps don't want to go back on Friday morning to their boss and say, oh, no, I didn't say anything. You know, I've got to, got to get some figures from this bike. You know, we've got to get 100,000 bucks a month from this fella, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you do get a lot of things being told that are furfies. No, as a rep, I know. I, I, I was disposed to start to do that early in the piece and jumped on very quickly by what I call an ethical sales manager, and there are a few of them around. Um, and, you know, high, high level of ethics doesn't hurt anybody, and it's certainly not going to cost anyone any money. You know, if you get a bit of truth going and it gets verified and it gets uh, networked through the information, then your company's seen as a valid one, and, and that's where I'd like to be seen. Um, so, yeah, the. Uh, the whole idea of instrumentation, of recording information, of recording your environment in your greenhouses and in your, your root zone is right there and available to us. And right now in Coffs Harbour, it's more available than any time. And guess what? Part of Gill's the first one to go after a, uh, a decent set of uh, telemetry gear with a Davis weather station and the soil sensor settings in that. So we've got those operators there. There are some smart ones, and they're going to drag the rest along. It's always the top 20%. And I think he's got some mates that are listening. Yeah. So um, in all of Australia, does Coffs Harbour represent 20% of the tomato and cucumber? No, no, Coffs Harbour would be probably less than one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just where I come from. It's, it's an amazingly backward spot as far as agriculture and horticulture is concerned, but with so much potential for being so progressive. Um, I went to a carbon conference two years ago at Dubbo and I could not believe the ability and the intelligence and the commitment to new technology of the farmers there. And I came back to Coffs Harbour and man, I felt like I was back in deliverance, you know? <laughs> it was just um, what was going on there. I, as I say, I don't want to be pejorative about it because these guys have just got this culture dragged through to them. And as I said, in front of probably a top plant pathologist um, and the local district agronomist, I had a seeds person telling me I was completely out of touch when I was telling people not to use sawdust. I mean, I've been around the industry for a lot longer than I had. And I'd seen everybody going from making